We have several updates to get to today, so buckle up. Welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. If you are new here, welcome. I would love it if you would help me to grow this channel. I am trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button now. Um, if you're returning, welcome back. I truly do appreciate you coming back to my channel, commenting on my videos, having conversations, and just continuing to support me. And I just wanna make sure that you are subscribed as well. So this video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do. I have some updates on several different stories that I have talked about recently. And instead of trying to do, you know, several different videos, I'm just going to squish them all into one. I will timestamp the video so you can see exactly what I'm talking about and perhaps listen to the stories that you're more interested in or get updates on all of them or whatever you choose to do. But this is also, this is just meant to crunch down on the limited time that I already am limited on, so I'm, I'm hoping that perhaps this is the best way to do this. But before I get into those, I wanted to touch on something that I think I just wanted to make you guys aware of. I know that in some of my videos, the lighting is different. Sometimes the setup might be a little bit different. I do try to get things consistent, but I have very limited space to record in, and this space is used by other members of my family. So every time I sit down, I do have to set my camera up fresh. I have to set my microphone up fresh. Um, so sometimes, you know, the daylight is different. My lights are doing different things. The angle is different. Um, so I'm aware of that. And there are times when I will post a video and I'm like, I didn't realize that one was so dark and other times and I'm like I didn't realize that that one was so blown out so I appreciate you being patient with me I am hoping that eventually I will be able to get better equipment and better lights but for right now this is what I'm working with so I just I appreciate you just being patient with me my husband also expressed to me recently that he was worried about my microphone potentially going out because there's been some static issues so if you guys do happen to notice that happening I don't think it's been terrible but if if it's, you know, there's a sound issue and you find it irritating, just know that I will work on it as soon as I can and I am just working with what I have available. So just as kind of a verbal index, the stories that we are going to be talking about today, we're going to talk about Next Benedict and some really heartbreaking information that has come out about her recently. Um, we're going to be talking about Kaylee Gain, that student that was brutally beaten up outside of her school a few weeks ago, and she has been in a coma since then due to her severe injuries. We have an update on that and the student that is facing potential criminal consequences for their actions and just a little bit more insight on that story and then we have some updates on the planet fitness situation and i think that these are really important things to be aware of uh, because it's really fascinating how little of this information that any of us would know if you know if if x wasn't the free speech platform that it is right now or if people weren't out there actively digging to find these facts because we can't count on the mainstream media to share these things with us and we can't count on the mainstream media to give us an accurate description or reality check of the things that actually matter to everyday people and I think that these issues do particularly to those of us who are raising children and trying to navigate through all the craziness but we can't navigate through it if we don't know what the craziness is. So the first story that I want to talk about is this person right here. Her name is Nex Benedict, also known as Dagny Benedict. Dagny is her birth name. Nex, I believe, was more of a nickname than anything, even though people did claim that she was non-binary and Nex was the name that she chose to align with that identity. But either way, Nex, Dagny, same person. Nex is easier to say, so that's what I tend to say. Um, so this is Nex Benedict. I have done two videos on this person to this point, and and just as a little refresher, even though I will link both videos in the description box below, is this teenager out of Oklahoma got into a fight in school and the next day was rushed back to the hospital where she passed away. Come to find out that she has this non-binary identity. It was claimed that she was being relentlessly bullied and that the fight that happened in the bathroom that supposedly resulted in her death was violent and brutal and was because she was transgender. So the media ran with that narrative before any of the facts came out, before we knew what the cause of death was, running around claiming that she was being relentlessly bullied. This is why she died and this is why 
now we need to allow all of these other laws that let teachers change the identity of children in their classroom without parents knowing that allow them to really to read explicit books in school and that allow minors to access medical treatments that would permanently alter their body to supposedly align with the gender that they have going on in their head. A city councilman named Sean Cummings out of Oklahoma City even went on this unhinged rant and blamed Superintendent Ian Walters out of Oklahoma for his part in Nex's death and blamed libs of TikTok for Kaya Rychek, who runs that account, for her part in Nex's death, uh, claiming that the things that they post online and their alignment with the right and not wanting all of these other laws to pass was creating this hostile environment for transgender students. And if they don't, again, allow all of these laws to pass, then we're going to see more dead trans kids. And that was the, again, the narrative that they ran with for a long time before the police body cam footage came out and showed next, as you can see, laying in the hospital bed, barely injured, probably a little bit roughed up, but for the most part in good spirits. And if you watch the police body cam footage, she herself admits to starting this fight because she was the one who threw water at the person that, you know, the person made a rude comment to her, next threw the water at them, and then next participated heavily in this physical conflict herself. Her grandmother, who was her legal guardian, said that she saw Nex after this fight and that Nex had all of these scratches and bruises on her face. As you can see, that is not there, and Nex does have her glasses, which you would think if the fight had been that violent, that her glasses would have been broken. It was also revealed after that that the cause of death, unfortunately, was self-inflicted by Nex Benedict herself. But that did not signal to the media that they should let up on the narrative that they were pushing out there. They just kept insisting that, okay, well, she didn't die as a result of the fight. She died because she took her own life because she was being bullied for being transgender. And again, if we don't let all of these other laws pass and let the transgender material run rampant in our schools, again, we're going to see more instances of this happening. So that brings us to the most recent update, which is probably the most heartbreaking piece of all of this and this exposes the actual trauma and horror that this 15 year old girl or 16 year old girl was going through in her home life says dr paul wax the executive director of the american college of toxicology reviewed the results and confirmed she could have consumed 50 to 100 pills to reach that toxicity level her routine medication fluxetine for bipolar disorder was present and may have contributed a second authority concluded her death was intentionally self-inflicted and then some other things that they found relating to what led to this point is as the report indicated the 11 pages released indicate handwritten notes suggestive for self-harm were found in nexus room by family members and that the teen has a history of bipolar disorder depression anxiety self-harm and then it goes on to say as is usual in these cases there is more to the story a hint was provided by the washington post on february 21st 2024 that never made it beyond that report describing dagny's funeral the article states that dagny's cousin spoke along with her mother and benedict next his biological mother was among the mourners their father who is in prison for abuse was not that last detail may have been more impactful than realized. On July 17th, 2019, when Dagny was 11 years old, an arrest warrant was issued for James Everett Hughes, Dagny's father. He was arrested on July 31st, 2019 in Sebastian County, Arkansas. The charge was for R of a minor under the age of 14 during the time period between May 2017 and August 2017 when Dagny was nine years old. Among many witnesses was Sue Benedict, the grandmother who would adopt Dagny in 2019. Hughes would accept a plea deal to SA in the second degree on November 27th, 2019. He was sentenced to five years in prison with 10 years suspended. He was arrested again on January 25th, 2024 by the Little Rock Police Department for failing to comply with reporting as a sex offender two weeks before Dagny would take her own life. Well, this whole article talks about how this girl was abused by her own father for years and he was arrested for it and this is how she ended up in the guardianship of her grandmother. A couple of weeks ago I tweeted out how this individual, Next Benedict, Dagny Benedict, 
did not take her life because of some bullying over her pronouns. It's obvious that because her grandmother was her guardian, that there had been other things going on in her life because that is not something that happens for a child that is in a healthy home. There has to be something severe going on for a child to be removed from the care of their parents and placed under the guardianship of a grandparent. And that was before I had heard any of this. And a lot of people came after me saying, what, like, grandparents can't raise healthy children, grandparents can't raise their grandchildren to be healthy, and that is not what I am saying at all. Uh, because I think there's a huge difference, for one thing, of grandparents assisting in raising their grandchildren, whether it be, you know, being the primary childcare so that their parents can work, or whatever it is. We're talking about a child that was legally removed from their own home, away from their parents, cut off contact with them for the most part, and placed legally under the grandmother's care. So you know that something bad is happening there. So it is extremely, extremely disgusting to continue to pretend that all of these kids in these situations, that their troubles start when they change their pronouns and people around them refuse to go along with that. And the number of stories that we continue to hear and that continue to come out about these kids at this point in their life that change their identity do so because something is going on in their life, because they are depressed, because they are anxious, because they are traumatized. And it is just continuing to prove that this gender ideology heavily preys on people particularly young girls who are looking to escape their identity in some way or escape something traumatic, that they think that if they just change their identity or go by a different name or change their pronouns, that somehow this is going to help them escape something that has happened in their past. And of course, it goes without saying that it is so disgusting how badly this girl's death has been exploited by the media to push this, this other agenda to pretend that the most horrifying thing happening in next Benedict's life was people making fun of her clothing or not abiding by her pronouns. Like that is the most vile thing that she could be experiencing while ignoring all of these other things, ignoring the true pain that she was, that was going on in her life, the things that she really needed attention to be brought to. And all of those things have been ignored. And what she went through and the decision, you know, the, the path that led her to make a decision about ending her life really had nothing to do with her pronouns and nothing to do with her supposed non-binary identity. But she is not here to advocate for herself. And that is the perfect person to use to exploit for these other agendas. And let's just have a little bit of a reminder of what some of the messaging was coming from the White House on this matter, because it also does relate to the story of Kaylee Gain that we're going to follow up on. And now, if you give me another moment here, I also want to address a heartbreaking development in the tragic loss of Nex Benedict. For parents across the country, and I know for many of you here and some of you watching, many of you watching, including myself, the cause of next death was devastating to learn. As the president said yesterday, every young person deserves to have the fundamental right and freedom to be who they are and feel safe and supported at school and in their communities. Bullying is completely unacceptable and it is, an all, it is on all of us to take reports of bullying seriously. There is always someone you can talk to if you're going through a hard time and need support. The president and his administration launched the 988 line to help, and we have a line dedicated to serving LGBTQI plus young people that can be reached by dialing 988 and pressing 3. I want to close by saying that LGBTQI plus young people across the country, you are loved exactly as you are. So the next story that I wanted to update on ties perfectly into the statement by KJP, and this is the story of Kaylee Gain. I did talk about Kaylee briefly at the end of another video that I did about Next, and I will again link that one in the description box below. But just as a refresher, 
Kaylee was beaten unconscious during a school fight outside of their high school in Missouri. The video went viral because Kaylee and this other girl were confronting each other, yelling at each other. The other girl grabbed Kaylee, flung her onto the ground. Kaylee was trying to kick her, obviously trying to fight back. The girl got her on her back, got Kaylee on her back, and repeatedly slammed her head into the concrete. Kaylee was left convulsing on the ground while this other girl got up and engaged in fights with other people that were kind of involved in the group. And Kaylee's injuries were so severe that she has been in a coma since then. And I wanted to bring this up because with all of the statements that we have seen coming from the media and from the White House talking about how school bullying is unacceptable and how we all need to support students and that they all need to feel safe in their learning environment, yet there have been no statements about Kaylee Gain or about any of the other students that we see on, our, on a daily basis of their videos hitting our social media accounts, exposing the nonstop horrific violence that is happening across the country in schools today. And if the media or KJP or anybody from the White House or this administration truly cared about violence in school and making sure that students feel safe, they would be talking about all of these stories and how horrifying they've become and how literally we have gone from the school fights that you and I were familiar with, you know, in our childhoods where people would kind of smack each other around a little bit and go home and call it good to now where we are talking about attempted murder and actual murder in some cases. And the type of fight that Kaylee endured, the type of beating that Kaylee endured was the kind of fight that they implied that next Benedict went through that they were so horrified by, which clearly she did not, yet somebody that actually went through this horrifying ordeal, they have been completely silent about. So a few days ago, I saw an update saying that Kaylee had finally woken up and that she had been moved out of the ICU. And this is the latest update saying that she has, she is waking up, she needs assistance walking and has limited verbal conversations. And I have seen other articles talk about how they're, they're not going to be sure about the extent of the brain damage for a while. And obviously if she's having, having limited verbal conversations, there might be some permanent damage there. There was also this article talking about how the, the family of the girl that actually beat up Kaylee is saying that she was the victim. This is the family of the Missouri girl who has been charged with the beating of 16-year-old Kaylee Gain into unconsciousness says she is the real victim as, and has been harassed and bullied before the caught-on video assault. The 15-year-old's aunt told Daily Mail that her niece, described as an honor student with a stellar record at Hazelwood East High School, was defending herself during the viral March 8th fight in Spanish Lakes, Missouri. The teen suspect's family on Saturday launched a petition on charged I think that's supposed to be change.org, not charge.org, begging Chief Juvenile Officer Rick Gaines of the 21st Circuit Court not to charge her as an adult. The petition highlighted the girl's many academic and athletic accomplishments, including the fact that she speaks four languages, plays the violin in the school orchestra and volleyball on the school's team, and had recently been selected for her college-level AP classes. Prior to an incident on March 8th, where she was seen defending herself from harassment and bullying, she had never been in trouble. Trouble, it read, her work as a scholar was tainted by the bullying she had to endure at school. I've also talked about this situation a lot on my Twitter account, and I have had a lot of people share footage with me claiming that the girl that beat up Kaylee was actually being bullied by Kaylee repeatedly and that Kaylee was harassing her and that she was making her life very difficult at school. And that all may be true and that is not okay and 100% needs to be addressed. But at the end of the day, this type of reaction where you are slamming someone's head into the pavement repeatedly, it, that's not okay. That is not an appropriate reaction and there are very serious consequences regardless of what led up to it. And the fact that I saw so many people try to justify this reaction by saying, hey, she was just defending herself, she was standing up for herself because this girl was just a pain in her butt all these other times, shows the lack of humanity that is, is becoming so much more prevalent in adults today. And it makes it less surprising that we have teenagers that are behaving this way. And again, if the media and the White House care so much about the bullying that goes on in schools and about kids not feeling safe and fights that are so severe that they result in somebody's death, 
Why are they not talking about Shaylee Mejia? She is literally somebody that was involved in a school fight who was beaten so severely that she died from the brain trauma. Yet nobody in the media and the White House is talking about this. So obviously, the media and the White House do not care one bit about Next Benedict. They don't care one bit about any of these students. And the only people that they are ever going to talk about are the ones that they can use to say, this is why we need all of these other depraved pieces of legislation and other kinds of depraved activities to be happening around our kids. And the last situation that I wanted to provide an update on was all of this stuff going around about Planet Fitness, which is another, I did a video on that one as well, not too long ago. So if you haven't seen what is going on there, I highly recommend it. Again, I will link it in the description box. But just as a quick refresher, earlier in March, there was a woman named Patricia Silver who was leaving the Planet Fitness location in Fairbanks, Alaska, I believe, that she was working out at. And she filmed herself in the parking lot saying that she had just encountered a man in the woman's locker room standing at the sink shaving and there was a 12 year old girl in the corner who had just finished showering who was wrapped in a towel uh cowering basically in the corner because she was freaked out that there was a man standing there when patricia brought this to the attention of the planet fitness staff they opted not to do anything and then they canceled her membership since then it has been exposed that planet fitness literally trains their employees to go along with this delusion that anybody can use the locker room or the bathroom that they self-identify as and they have a record of canceling memberships and kicking out women for complaining not only that, Libs of TikTok had had a journalist call a Planet Fitness location just to see what they would say about it. And the staff member said that they had had a staff meeting about this, that they had been made aware of it, but that the picture that Patricia had taken of this man shaving in the woman's locker room in the location in Fairbanks, Alaska, was completely fabricated, that none of it was real, and that people were overreacting. But then a news story was released the following day saying that this particular individual in Alaska, this grown man, was assigned a Planet Fitness employee employee as some kind of bodyguard and that woman, any woman that would complain about him being in the locker room, the staff member that was accompanying him would tell them that they were welcome to use a bathroom stall if they felt unsafe. So a few things have come out since then. This is on the Libs of TikTok account. It says, an insider within Planet Fitness sent us this image of a course that new hires are required to take. Planet, Planet Fitness confirms that their bathroom policy does not require any form of ID for men to enter the women's bathroom and anyone can use whichever bathroom they wish. And you can see the questionnaire below. It says, all members may use Planet Fitness locker room facilities, bathroom showers, and all other facilities and programs separated by sex based on their blank and you were supposed to fill in the answer and the correct answer is self-reported gender identity and this is a video from another location where this seems to be a problem second photo from a planet fitness locker room is going viral online what appears to be a man using the women's locker room at a location in downington pennsylvania in addition to the clothing and this person's physical appearance you can clearly see the patron has a full beard and we have yet another example of a woman being banned from a Planet Fitness in New Jersey for complaining, and this was back in 2022. It says, I was banned from Flemington, New Jersey Planet Fitness in 2022 when I complained about a man in the woman's locker room who exposed himself to me. When I refused to refer to him as her, manager Matt DeMille banned me. See the form below, that's Matt's signature, not mine. And then it seems like all of these Planet Fitness staff members are now just flooding Kaya Rychik's account with information about things going on behind the scenes. And this person sent this to Kaya saying, Hey Kaya, I work for Planet Fitness and I wanted to give some inside information about how Planet Fitness is handling this transgender situation. So for a few days, our phones weren't working and thought something was technically wrong. But today our regional manager told me that's deliberate because Planet Fitness has been getting calls about the transgender user Using the woman's locker room so to not deal with it they shut the phones down i asked if it was just or cl our club or region and he said company wide and finally kaya Reichick did a interview with the former planet fitness ceo mike grondahl about the recent transgender bathroom controversy and he says it's in the culture corporate office is brain dead find another safe place to work out
So Planet Fitness is banning women for complaining, shutting down their phone lines so they don't have to talk to you about it. They can pretend that it's not happening. They're letting just any man who says, I'm a woman, into their bathroom, even though they're dressed in basketball shorts and have a full-fledged beard. And the former CEO of Planet Fitness is saying, you know what? It's in the company culture. It's the way it is. They're all brainwashed. I would find another place to work out. Anyway, that is all the updates I have for you today on all of these subjects. I would love to hear your thoughts on all of them and any of them in the comments below. Please hit that like button. It helps me so much. I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel to help this channel grow. Please keep it real, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.